goodness, we are live, and it's Friday. It seems like we haven't been here forever. For forever, I can't even speak. I'm so excited today. But here we are again on the Manufacturing E-Commerce Success Show. I'm Damon Postalka. I'm one of your co-hosts, and that lovely dude right there, Kurt Anderson. Take it over, my friend. Dude, happy 2023, Damon. And by and just for the record, if you guys, if you hear anybody snoring, Damon, who's snoring right now? Your dog right there. My dog just had surgery. And so remember when he blew his ACL a couple yep. years ago? Well, guess yep. just well, when you blow one, you blow the other. So now he's down there recovering. So he's like, he's just snoring. I think the roof's gonna cave in. So if the roof caves in, Damon, you and Allison just keep crushing it. So, guys, all right, happy 2023. What an absolute Man, I'm like, I'm like verklempt right now. What an honor. What a privilege. We have Allison DeFord on stage. Allison, happy new year, my friend. How are you? Happy new year. I'm awesome. I appreciate you guys having me. And uh, like I said a moment ago, everyone that's on here, the, the bar's low. So it's all uphill from here. Have no fear. These guys got you piece of cake so all right we've got and we've got so much to cover so uh, yeah. anybody out there not familiar with allison boy you need to get to know allison the ford founder president of felt marketing we're going to dig deep into her marketing expertise i'm saying it now i'm going to say it multiple times if you are looking for a fun <laughs> snarky hysterical newsletter i encourage you i invite you i implore you i'm pleading with you and you'll thank me later later sign up for allison's newsletter it is phenomenal it is absolutely incredible Allison, i want to dig in i need to understand how you do that but all right we've got a lot to unpack we have a lot of friends here already yep. you know, oh my everybody's God. rolling hey, in got your partner in crime we've got diane greg miss you is here today yarlene so guys happy new year thank you drop us a note if you're not connected with allison please connect with allison on linkedin and boy again you will yep you will thank us later. So, Allison, here's my first question. Now, first, Damon, you know, Allison's a repeat offender. Yeah. Like a multiple re repeat offender. Like I think you, glutton for a, punishment to come back glutton, and be with I, us. And she's a glutton. So, uh, thank you, Allison. You were one of our absolute first guests on the podcast. You were one of our first guests in 2022. And so, we wanted to kick off the year on a high note with you. My first question for you of the day. You ready? Are you, are you sitting down? I don't think you are. You no. Ready? When you were a little girl growing up, now I know you are in sunny Southern California. You grew up in the great state of Indiana, the Hoosier state. And when you were a little girl growing up, I don't think I've asked you this question. I had been on the show multiple times. Who was your hero growing up as a little girl in the great state of Indiana? Who was your hero? Hmm. Good question. Um, this will not surprise you, but uh, Wonder Woman <laughs> and uh, Superman, quite honestly. And Wonder Woman and Superman. So let's take it one step further. There. <laughs> there she is. There's Wonder Woman. So now was it, uh, what, now what, was it Linda Carter? Was it Linda Carter Wonder Woman? Like which Wonder Woman? Yeah. yeah. Well, because it was the TV show. So yeah, that was our age, Linda Carter. Linda Carter was our age, yeah. actually, actually, Superman the show when I was really little. You know, yep. it was all those old black and whites. And yeah. I don't know. I just, I liked um, that they were strong. I liked that they were always saving and helping people. And um, just were good people. So I think that's yeah. what drew me to them. The good old well, days. I think, what was that, George Reeves? You know, so Superman. So, guy, you know, if you're under the age of what? I don't know, like yeah. 50, you probably have no idea what we're talking about. But, you know, a great Superman uh, uh, sitcom, or not sitcom, but TV show. Wonder Woman, boy, when we were kids, that was awesome. Damon, you remember those days, don't you? Every time I hear Wonder Woman, I hear that Wonder Woman scream, Wonder Woman! I hear it screaming in my head every time we say that name. <laughs> well, it, it just comes, it's like, you know, you watch it. What'd you watch? You watch Wonder Woman. That's what right. you do. Well, Allison is absolute Wonder Woman. She's also yep. the manufacturing trailblazer. I brought, I, I'm flying the colors right here for you, Allison. So I know I many mine on too. Have their T-shirts out. Up, but... uh, Christopher Reeves. Now, Christopher Reeves. That's right. He was in the movie. Uh, uh, who was the gentleman that played on the the TV show? I don't, we won't get cut. But guys, Google that. The, oh, the TV show from like the 50s, 60s. I don't know. I don't know. 
kind of a challenge. It's Christopher so. Reeves, God bless him. You know, so all right, let's dig in. So Allison, 2022 just wound down. You had a wonderful year. You were our guest in January of 22, kicked off our year. One of the questions we talked about, everybody does like their word of the year, right? Like, oh, my word of the year is whatever, right? Last year, I was we were talking about courage. And I was sharing how, like, I find you just so courageous. You're such an inspiration to many of us here, your network, your friends, your LinkedIn family. You were talking a little bit about your, your word for the year for 2023. I thought it was just a great word. Can you share with everybody? What's the word? What's your aspiration, your inspiration? What's going to go on for 2023? Well, it's interesting. I have, uh, I have a couple of super friends mm -hmm. and uh, also agency owners. And we've been masterminding together for 10 years, every single week. 10 years? Nice. 10 years. Wow. Good. And every year we would pick four words and we would draw them on a Starbucks mug. You would get it. It was like black or white or sorry, black or red, like, like, and it come with a white pen. So we would draw, of course, being artists and whatever, we would draw the words on there and then Every week we send each other an update and those are the words at the top of the update. And what I realized this year was that was too many. I needed one. Mm. So the word, and this just came to me and I, I go with my gut because it's usually pretty spot on. My word for this year is F U N because if I bring fun to every situation, to every hard thing that I maybe look courageous, but I'm scared shitless. Mm -hmm. If I bring some fun and it doesn't necessarily mean silly sometimes, um, but I think, you know, to a client meeting, to a big presentation that maybe I'm shaking in my boots, mm -hmm. just bring the fun. And immediately when I say that word, I feel myself relax. Right. I smile. And I think, okay, let's, let's do this. I got this. Yeah. That's awesome. Damn. I not say that. First drop the mic moment in 2023 yeah. just occurred guys. So bam, drop the yeah. mic. Well, fun, right? Have fun. I absolutely love this. Let's let's man, we have so much to cover, but we can't let that one go. So, yeah. Damon, we had a guest a couple years ago, and boy, what an inspiration! She's through the MEP network. We're going to talk about the MEPs today, Allison. And so, uh, she, our friend April Schmidt, and she, she was terrified. She's an introvert, didn't want to come on. Uh, you know, like I asked her on her LinkedIn on our LinkedIn live show, she had like this look of terror, and she put out a post and she said, "You know, when you have those moments in life." those turning moments. And I'm like, it was just me and Damon, you know, but she's like, when you have those turning moments where like, you you know, as you're saying, like there's, you know, terrified, horrified, do I do this? Do I stay in my no growth zone as she called it? Or do I break out of that no growth zone? And her term was, I get courageously uncomfortable, mm -hmm. courageously uncomfortable. And I just, I absolutely love that phrase. And so you took it to a new level, nice and simple, three letters, guys, F U N let's just have fun in 2023 enough of the serious stuff from the covid and all that garbage right so mm -hmm. Allison, just let's let's unpack that a little bit further so what type of what are some goals aspirate what's what's some fun that you're going to have in 23 when we're going to have you back here in january of 24 what are some things that are going to be fun on your plate that you've accomplished i would say a lot more speaking which uh i don't know if you guys remember this, but I, I really don't like my voice all that much. And I detest seeing myself on video. So it's uh, really uncomfortable. It's, it's getting more comfortable because right. now I just do it, right? I just show up, be present. It's not about me. It's about being of service to the people that are, that are listening or that are watching. So when I reframe it, um, but I think speaking for sure, um, a new podcast is coming and um, and I'm really excited about that. And then I think also watching the growth of my clients, right? Taking them from, you know, we were here, we had no unique voice. We had a, a kind of cruddy website. It, you know, now there's new ownership, new shift. And then we helped them morph into something unique, you know, 
into the category of one and then watching what happens with that and watching how much fun they end up having and their team. And um, another thing would be some travel, more travel. And I never thought I would say this in my life, planning. Mm, okay. I've always been a fly by the seat of my pants kind mm. of gal. And what I've learned from one of my super friends is that the more you plan and you know really schedule your time, the more freedom you have. And I'm finding it to be true. So been experimenting with that and that'll be something I will talk about next year. Okay. All right. Mic drop number two. Yep. Plan to give yourself more freedom. Is that what you just said? Man, how juicy was that? Man, we've got chat box. Guys, again, yeah. happy Friday. We're here with Allison DeFord. Drop us a note. Please connect with Allison DeFord. We got Val in the house. Val, happy new year. Tom Herman, my friend, happy new year. Whitney's dropping. She's getting some trivia answers for us. Thank you. We got Christopher Reeves, George Reeves. She's finding out if they're related. We got Chris Harrington is here today. And I know you were on the broadcast recently. So this is just all, oh, man, we're just, you're lots of love coming at you. Allison. Yeah. Well, Allison, you're founder, president of Felt Marketing. You're the boy advocate, cheerleader, the zealot of manufacturing masters. We're going to talk about that. Uh, you talk about your public speaking. You're speaking at Purdue University a uh, week and a half from now. We're going to talk about that. Let's get into Felt Marketing. Okay. Back in the day, you decided, boy, you were Wonder Woman. You're taking that entrepreneurial plunge. Felt Marketing, you have taught me so Man, dude, I like I learn every time I'm around you. I'm like a sponge when you're in the house. Empathy, curiosity, emotional connection. Just share like that felt marketing, the story behind felt, and like what you're what you do for manufacturers. Well, I'll make a long story short. Uh, for years, we were DeFord Designs because my last name, right? That's what you do when you start out. Yeah. Um, and then we, I. I brought on, you know, other colleagues and we realized this was way bigger than me. This was, and it wasn't about me and it no longer represented us. So we were looking to rebrand and this was like 13 plus years ago, I think. And my creative partner at the time and, and was for 20 years, we were standing outside. We had this yard behind our building, believe it or not, in, in Southern California, rare. So we're standing out there and we're really just like pacing and we're thinking. And I, I honestly don't remember which one of us said it. I feel like it was this culmination. And it's like, you know, the most beloved brands, they're not just seen. They, they want to be seen, right? They want to be heard. Yeah. But the most beloved brands, especially the ones that, that she and I were huge fans of, they were felt. People could felt something, right? When you go get that cup, cup of coffee at Starbucks or when you, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm at a loss at the moment, but. Like Apple, was, Apple like, users or, you know, like yeah, you know, Harley yeah. Davidson, you, you know, like they're just, they have that emotional connection, right? Yep. And, and we both, it was like a lightning bolt struck. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is ironic because that's in the F in the felt logo now, yeah. but it was like, yeah. We want to be the embodiment of what you can become. Yeah. So leading, leading by example, because I think for many years we made the same mistakes that I see manufacturers making today, right? We spoke our own language. We talked marketing speak all day long because we loved it. Well, it, they didn't give a shit, right? It was like, right. and, and you'd scratch your head and think, huh, we're doing all these things, right? Why isn't it resonating? So I, I've made all the mistakes. I still make mistakes, but it's a lot of fun to have been doing this for so long that now I've recognized the patterns and I can help people overcome faster. Right. Absolutely love it. Our different, hey, Bonnie's here, man. You talk about emotional connection with her no lids. Boy, she's been absolutely crushing it, making tons. But she's actually, she's helping folks with disabilities. Bonnie, you're doing awesome. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to everybody. So, Allison, you're doing this thing, uh, Manufacturing Masters. Mm -hmm. 
let's I want to I want to let's I, there's a lot to cover there. So let's let's dive right in there. So felt marketing, you're just a, a marketing guru for manufacturers. I've seen it firsthand. You're just a dynamo, a powerhouse. You do incredible work. Now you've tra- not I won't say transition, but you've taken things to a higher level with the team at Manufacturing Masters. Just share with the folks what's going on there. What are the benefits, the value that you it's just priceless what you guys are doing. Share with everybody what's going on at Manufacturing Masters. Well, I appreciate you asking about that. And I, again, I want to use this as an example of how you step out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And Manufacturing Masters happened because of a multitude of things. Mm-hmm. Number one, I stopped being quiet and I really started showing up uh, in 2018, only four years ago, yeah. and using my voice. And so, therefore, you know, putting the message out there. And then Ray and I uh, met and we decided, okay, we keep having these change the world conversations. We should start a podcast and we should have these conversations, you know, weekly. What do you think? And he's like, okay, do you know how to start a podcast? And I'm like, nope, but we'll figure it out. Scared, scared me to death. So we started the podcast and we had Darren Mitchell on the podcast. How did I meet Darren Mitchell? Through LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn. And, I put myself and, out there. And, and, I'm not sure you, and I'm not sure if you said, how, and the name of your podcast is? MFG Out Loud. MFG Out Loud. I dropped in the chat earlier today, guys. Absolutely check it out. It is awesome. It is amazing. Damon, you've been a guest. Probably yeah. have, you know, a bunch of folks, uh, Bonnie, M- Greg, miss you. You've had tons of our, our LinkedIn family as guests. It's a great podcast. Please continue from there. Well, because we had Darren on as a guest and then got to know him, um, he reached out after he sold his business and he said, I'm starting something new and I'd like you to be an expert on the platform. And I said, me? (laughs) Yes. He said, are you? (laughs) But, you know, you just think I'm not worthy. You know, there's so many other people. And he said, no, I want you. Um, and so long story short, he said, I'm creating a platform, an on-demand education and training platform just for manufacturers. He said, because what I want to do is help them know all the things that they don't know. Uh, The things I wish I would have known 25 years ago. And he said, the problem though, is that you want to hire a consultant or you wanna hire an expert, but you don't know if you can trust them. You really don't. And sometimes it's hit and miss, right? Sometimes you spend a lot of money, they do amazing things. You think, my God, that just changed my business and my life. Sometimes it's the complete opposite. And so he said, I want to provide a network, a community of experts for manufacturers um, that they can trust. And so today it just launched this year in Jan- sorry, last year in January, there are over well over 500 videos, short, no fluff. You learn something in every single video, even if it's not directly related to what you do. Right. It, it blows my mind. I learn something um, every time I watch a video and it's all done in a manufacturing environment. And these are people that specialize in everything in manufacturing that you can possibly think of. And so now there are over 500 videos. There are over 120 experts from around the world that otherwise, how would I have known, you know, Ben over in England and he has this amazing technique or, you know, somebody that's doing something on the shop floor that, Uh, my God, it's going to be a miracle for my business. So, and it's a subscription base. You can opt out anytime you want. There are no strings and you can reach out to the experts on your own if you would like to and work with them directly. There's no middleman. It's, it's just amazing. And so he reached out to me and and I said, well, who's, who's going to help build the brand? Who's going to name it? And he said, well, that was my next question. (laughs) So Felt ended up naming Manufacturing Masters nice. um, because it's a triple entendre. And that's when I know we've we've hit something like we've hit a gold mine. 
it's you're being taught by manufacturing masters. You want to become one. And it's like getting a master's in manufacturing. Right, right, and right. the tagline is everything they never taught you in school. Right. right. So it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. And I'm also a brand ambassador. So I get to work with MEPs and manufacturing associations and help them bring manufacturing masters to their members at a discounted rate. And it just it does so many things for them. I can't even tell you from lead generation, uh, the analytics alone are worth their weight in gold right. and really just staying connected and bringing this massive amount of learning to your people, best practices. So. Awesome. I can go on and Good stuff. Well, that was, Hey, man, that wasn't your first time. Was it? That was awesome. Let's yeah. Hey, let's get, you're getting a lot of love here. How about your buddy yeah. right here, man? How about yeah. Ray's hey. Diano? Guess what? Ray's going to Damon Ray's going to be on a program in a few weeks. Yeah. We've got our friend, Bonnie talk about fun. Best time with you and Ray. We've got our dear friend, Chris Harrington. Happy new year, Chris. And then, and gals in the house, happy new yeah. year, gal. And just, you are so worthy Allison. So I, you know, you connected uh, myself with Darren and just what a relentless entrepreneur. And I remember I, I was sitting at my dining room table and I'm having this talk with Darren for the first time. And he painted this vision. He's like, I'm creating the Netflix for manufacturing. Yeah. He yeah. goes, I know people could go all over YouTube and find this hack or this person or whatever. And maybe they'd be good, but he's like, I'm going to consolidate all that expertise in one hub. And sure enough, you brought that dream to life. Talk about some of the victory, some of the success that you've seen. And uh, and then we're going to slide into the, the relationship you have with the MEPs. We're going to talk about your program at, that you have coming up at the Purdue MEP. But just talk about some of the successes or just some of the great rewarding things that you've heard from people taking advantage of manufacturing masters. I think my favorite story to date is Darren was sitting in actually live in a room with 20 different um people from a manufacturing mm -hmm. company and they'd been using the the platform and this guy had been really quiet during the whole meeting and he he, he kind of raised his hand and darren's like yeah you, you have something to share and he's like i gotta tell you he said i've been doing my job for like 26 years i've never known what best practices look like <laughs> I honestly don't know, right. you know, right. I mean, he goes, I'm doing my job. Okay. But I don't know. Could it be better? And he said, now I know. Right. He said, this wow. has been a godsend for me. And I just feel so like empowered and right. I feel smart. And like, I have this point of reference and right. to date, that's my favorite story. Cause it just, it gives me chills every time I think about it because right. it's like, what a revelation. And it's just so simple. Now it's all there for him whenever he wants to turn it on. Right. And that's, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, you're forced, you're throwing on so many different hats throughout the day. And you, you know, you, you need to be an expert in, you know, everything, but you become a jack of all trades, master of none, where now, you know, pun intended, now you have access to manufacturing masters. I think a number of folks that are here with us today are actually, uh, do you want to give some shout outs? Like Ray, uh, I think is Greg, Greg. you, uh, I think you. Yeah. So what, what, who, who are some of the experts that you have on, on, uh, on manufacturing masters? Oh my gosh. Um, there's a lot. I there's a lot. And we'll, forgive, and we'll ask apologies. There's I know there's so a many amazing people that yeah. I feel, um, honored, absolutely honored to be among these other folks, Yeah, you know, yeah. and learn from them that, um, they're just, I mean, and there's people from like Campbell Soup, Boeing, Continental Airlines, from big yeah. to really small yeah. uh, manufacturing operations and people from every walk of, you know, HR, finance, uh, you name it, it's yeah. in there. Yeah. And I think what's so great is that every video, the whole, like everyone is coached, by the way. So this is like a TED Talk. This is very... Yeah. Um, I want to say scripted, but it's very planned and every single video has to have a what's in it for the viewer. What am I going to talk about? Here are the three points effectively. Here's the wrap up. Go. Right. And it's like um, there is zero fluff. Darren said no one yeah. has time for that. Right. It, this is not entertainment. 
it's it's training best practices inspiration it, so yeah i think that's what i love about it is it's very succinct tight Perfect. Okay. And I know you, uh, I think you were in Arizona when you did your, your shoot, right. And, and just share a little bit, like let's, uh, somebody's out there, small manufacturer, they're hearing this for the first time, or they haven't really had a, a great dose of Allison. Can you share like just some, uh, whether you want to talk about the wee wee syndrome or like, you know, what are some marketing tips either from the video or like, what are things that you're getting best practices out to manufacturers that maybe you're seeing that are slipping past them? Well, in my, I was one of the early ones. So mine are a little bit longer than five minutes. Shocking. Um, but they're jam packed. Like I wanted each one to be like a master class. Yeah. And I did a series to kind of cover from strategy yeah. to social, right? From strategy to execution. So um, I cover things like make a website makeover. What are the components? What are you probably doing wrong? How do you overcome it? Um, I talk about a social media strategy and how to create the content. We I talk about reigniting your brand because brand foundation is what I often yeah. see is the weak link yeah. for most manufacturers. So it's like before you get out the gate and start amplifying a message, yeah, take two steps back and let's shore up the foundation. Can, can you, can we dig into that for a little bit? Like re, say if somebody's like, man, my brand is just stale. I'm just, you know, yeah. but I, it's not my, it's not my, like, I'm not a branding guy myself, you know, like say somebody's like, boy, it's just not my wheelhouse. Not sure who to turn to. It just, when I hear branding, I'm thinking it's, you know, dollar signs, it's going to be very expensive. What are some tips or suggestions that you have for a manufacturer that needs to kind of spice up their brand? Good question. Well, and I was going to talk about that today. Um, my plan was to talk about, crushing your marketing goals in 2023. And I've got five major tips um, of how to do that. Let's hit and it then, right now. Let's do it. Okay. And Might then we'll follow right. up with what's getting in your way. And that will answer the question that you just Very asked. Good. Let's hit it right now. All right. So the number one thing that I think is important in crushing your goals in 2023 is less is more. Same thing with my word for the year, right? Instead of four or five words, I have one. And, and I understand that, you know, you'll have a variety of goals, right? It's okay to have more than one goal, obviously. You've got financial goals, you've got analytical goals, growth goals, etc. personal. Mm -hmm. But what I see happen with manufacturers often is that they have too many goals and then mm. it gets a little convoluted. And so then as the year goes on, then nobody revisits the goal, goals, plural. And there's just this, there's this lack of clear, crystal clear focus. So I would encourage a manufacturer or if you're helping a company, let's say you're just a marketer, you know, or not necessarily in manufacturing, but mm -hmm. pick a word. What's your word for the year? What's going to drive every goal, everything that you do? And I want to piggyback that with number two, the most important thing that I see people forgetting to do is to ask why. Ask why. Yeah. So you have this goal and I'll give you an example mm -hmm. and then I'll give you the example of how to flip the script. Mm -hmm. So I had a manufacturer recently say, we want more engineers to know who we are, mm -hmm. to know what we do, and to engage with us this year. I said, okay, that's cool. We can help you do that. Mm -hmm. I said, what if we flipped that a little bit? I said, how do you want these engineers to feel? <sighs> Crickets. They just looked at me like, what? And I said, how do you want them to feel? right? At every stage of the buying cycle. So before they know you, how do you want them to feel? After they get to know you and they're evaluating you, how do you want them to feel? Um, if they come to your website, how do you want them to feel? So think about how different that statement will be. We want more engineers to know about us, like us, trust us, choose us. Or we want to empower engineers to know what they don't know. 
We want to infuse engineers, right, with an easy button. We want to make it easy for them. So whatever your word ends up being, it will infiltrate your goals and it that's your why. That's the crux of everything that you're doing. And I feel like it's very systematic and connected. I'm a fan of a holistic system. So everything, one thing connects to the next, to the next, to the next. It's all connected, right? Like the Hoberman sphere, which of course I have here that, you know, does this. And when everything's connected, you're going to get more momentum because you've got a full yeah. deal. So <laughs> that's awesome. I okay. just, I just okay. got to laugh because I, <laughs> one of the things I, I, I read every day and, and part of my, my personal mission is it talks about how I want people to feel. And we do, we use that in our business. And I was like, Ooh, God, Allison's saying it. Maybe I got something here. All right. So Damon, let we have to take a moment of silence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my. So, while we're doing this, please read this. Everyone yeah. needs to get the felt marketing newsletter. I am inviting you. I am welcoming you. I am pleading you with you. Yeah, do it. Just do it. You. Do yourself a favor. I dropped the link in the chat. If you don't see it, go to Felt Marketing, hit subscribe. There isn't a more entertaining and actual newsletter no out there. She loved the 12 days of felt miss. I, I, Allison, you are, you're such a gift, man. I, yeah, like, no doubt. Okay. Let's get the momentum going. But I just want everybody to just to savor what she said. Yeah. We want engineers yeah. to uh, engage with us, find us, like us. No. How can we help them be the hero of the story is Allison's line that you taught me. You always use. I, oh, my God. How do we do want them to feel? How do you want to make them feel? I'm done talking, Allison. Please take it away. Where are we on number four? Where are we? Uh, number three. Number three, number yeah. three. Okay, number three. I'm writing them down. Okay. So once you simplify your goals, right? And you know why, and you know how you want people to feel, then it's time to reverse engineer your how. So, excuse me, what kinds of content? Because that's what marketing is, right? It's messaging, it's content, it's video. What kinds of content will help engineers, for example, feel the way you want them to feel? Would it be some inspiring TED Talks? Would it be industry trends and patterns that maybe they haven't identified? Uh, comparisons or um, a configurator tool, which Kurt's been talking about. Demos, inspirational quotes, case studies, live Q&As. Do you know how many, um, and, and I mean, I'm guilty of this as well. I should do way more lives and, and show up. And um, But most manufacturers, they're not doing most of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think we get caught up um, because I, you know, we do social media for a number of companies and it's a lot, a lot, a lot of wee-wee. You know, it's like, oh, let's talk about the award that we won or the it's lots of, you know, look how great we are. And it's just such a natural thing. Right. We all do it. That's the I think the nature of social media is is very narcissistic. And what I like to help them see is that people think about the your favorite brands. And I think we can learn a lot from B2C as B2B folks here. Um, they're not constantly showing you how the Coke is made, mm -hmm. right? The precision equipment that makes that beverage that you love, how that goes into the can, the why, Ooh, the new website that they have that talks about Coke and can, no, they're showing you people enjoying the beverage. They're showing you, you. So I think we can learn a lot from that, that, B2B has forever and a day been so focused on um, our, ourselves. And we think that people want to know how the thing is made. And, you know, no, they want to know why you do it. Mm -hmm. They want to see themselves mm -hmm. getting this problem solved that only you can solve. Mm -hmm. So, again, you can see how this all connects, right? So now you've reverse engineered your how. Mm -hmm. And you will now... It, 
what to say and where to say it is just going to pop up. It's going to be so easy. Number four, I would encourage people to package it. Right? Think about uh, a campaign, an overarching campaign. This doesn't need to necessarily cost, you know, a zillion dollars or anything. But when you put all the components together under one umbrella, it's such a stronger, louder, clearer message. People need to see things, what is it, 13 to 25 times like a commercial before they actually remember it the first time. Thus the repetition. And I have manufacturing clients that say, oh, well, we already talked about, I don't know, having a lunch and learn. We already talked about, and I said, you have to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. I said, I want you to always assume no one saw that last post. Yep. No one saw it. It's a blip. And and probably at that moment didn't care. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. I said, think about it. Think about what someone is doing mm -hmm. when they're looking at these posts. And I and I I said this recently um, in a training. I said it reminds me a lot of Top Gun Maverick. Mm -hmm. Miracle number one, they actually see your content at all while they're scrolling. Yep. You're Miracle right. number two, they actually stopped to glaze over it. Number Miracle number three, they actually stopped to read it and internalize it. Miracle number four, they click like. That's a lot of miracles, right, to count on. Um, miracle number five, they share it and maybe comment. Right. And that that's, that's one post. And there's, th this is... They're seeing this all day long from everybody. So how do you stand out? What are you giving them mm -hmm. that is valuable? Right. What are you giving them? What are you talking about that no one else is talking about? So, and then number five, you've got to schedule what you're going to do. That's the way to crush your marketing goals. Again, that's that the planning gives you the freedom. So if you schedule these things and then you've got to analyze them. You've got to pay attention and every single month. Well, how did we do? Is this working? And I see a lot of sales managers get caught up, um, especially if they're in charge of also marketing, which makes me cringe. Um, but they they say, oh, well, our followers didn't increase that much. It was only 5%. Our um, engagement is was only up 1%. And what I like to do is I remind them, let's take a look at the quality of the numbers, not just the numbers. So it's definitely qual sorry, quality over quantity. Mm -hmm. Do you have more architects now following you than were a year ago? Yes, and that's what you wanted. Mm -hmm. Do you have more contractors following you? Do you, are, is anybody engaging? Well, yeah. People are engaging. They weren't engaging that much last year. So it's like really paying attention, not just month yeah. over month, but year over year. And then, you know, let's face it. If you get a million Russian porn stars following you on Instagram, BFD, it doesn't change your business. Woo, you have a lot of followers. That's not, that's not the point. The point is growing a community. That's the difference. So I would rather have, and think about how many customers do you actually need between now and like, let's say in 10 years, I'll be 65. How many new clients do I need to help? Am I capable of helping in 10 years? Same with a, a contract manufacturer. How many customers do you need? Yeah, right. And once you break it's that like, down, you know, you do that a few times and you got it. it. This is not like we don't need a million. We probably don't even need a hundred. Yeah. So that's a way I think to help yourself crush those goals is to, you know, especially when sales gets involved, we get so focused on the numbers, mm -hmm. not saying they're not important. We need the money, right? We need the growth. Mm -hmm. We we need the a healthy, you know, bottom line. But I think that this mm -hmm. will help you actually achieve those goals versus setting these lofty things. And then you go, okay, go. And your sales and marketing people are like, 
I can't turn water to wine, mm-hmm. you know? So you've got to have the tools and the resources. The other thing that I want to make crystal clear, and I wrote this in big green letters on my iPad, your sales team should be involved from the beginning. And if you say, well, I don't have a team. I have one guy. Okay. Get that guy in a room. Mm -hmm. Marketing needs to work with him, needs to learn from him or her. Mm -hmm. Right. They, the, the whole point is that we're working together. So you've got a D silo this year. Finally, just make that change, make that shift and really invite each other to the table because that's the only way that you're going to, um, I think, really tap in and become more relevant is if, you know, your salespeople are the boots on the ground. So their, their knowledge, their stories, it's invaluable. And it's, and it's ironic and not really the more we feature employees, selfies, um, low production value, just, you know, in the moment type of posts for clients, those always get the highest engagement because people know people, they like people Mm -hmm. and you're the face of the company. Um, Then, and I I feel like I've done a lot of talking. The other things I wanted to cover were five ways that I see manufacturers, what's getting in your way of doing these things. So you guys can chime in or let me know when you want to. So it's been awesome. The the comments have been rolling. Grab a drink. So your, your brother, Ray says dropping some knowledge. We've got Vale in the house. And, and of course, you know, sell the sizzle, not the steak. Yeah. And if anybody wants to chime in, you know, I, I think a lot of people here, they've gone through like either a webinar or like listen to Allison, listen to us, that wee wee syndrome. And if anybody's not sure what the wee wee syndrome, Val, why don't you explain to people, drop in the chat box, what is that wee wee syndrome? Yeah. Just, so, all right, I just, Allison, while you're catching a breath, let's just recap and then we're going to dive in because I, man, this is so good. Okay. Number yeah. one, less is more. Less is more. Be focused on your goals. Number two, ask why number three reverse engineer your how number four package it number five schedule big word of the year and measure these and measure it yeah schedule and, and and all right allison let's keep this party rock and rolling and guys i know like uh i don't, I don't even know what time i've lost track of time if you're loving this, we've got Allison is going to be live at the Purdue MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership on the 19th of January. I believe that's a Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern time. I dropped the link in the chat box. Man, if you're not getting enough of Allison, sign up for her newsletter. Go to feltmarketing.com and you want to sign up for Please sign up for her newsletter. You will thank us later. Come to her webinar. Allison, take it away. Let's keep this party rolling. All right. Well, this is based on, I would say, I've been doing this 30 years, but the last 15, um, these are the patterns and the consistencies that I see that are getting in our way of just crushing our, our marketing and sales goals. So if you remember nothing else from today, I want you to remember this one thing. Ready? Marketing starts from the inside Mm. out and from the top down. So the problem that I see so many times is that if the leader or leaders, right, they don't know the why they don't talk about the why Mm -hmm. they're not focused on how do we want customers to feel? Um, maybe they don't even believe in marketing. They think it's still, you know, mad men in the sixties and smoke and mirrors and, you know, advertising bullshit. And it is not. Does some of that still exist? Oh yes, unfortunately, but it has changed dramatically. So if you've got a leader that doesn't believe in it, um, that's going to hurt the efforts of the company. That's going to hurt the efforts of the sales team. The whole point is that if you're marketing properly, strategically, um, not at people, but on behalf of and for them, you are helping your salespeople sell while they're sleeping. And as Greg talks about all the time, you're making it easier to find you, 
to like you and to trust you, which you need those three things before someone is going to give you their money. And, and I talk about marketing from the inside out is that a lot of times, um, you know, people can see where your heart is as a brand. And if you've got a big heart, if you're doing um, good things, if you are talking like a person and not a robot, if you're really human, people are going to be drawn to you faster and for a longer period of time. So that increases loyalty. So I, again, it's really important to me. And I think it's important um, for anybody on this live that marketing starts from the inside out and from the top down. Okay. The chat box is on fire. It's on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> We got to pull a couple of like good actual items. Marketing starts from the inside out, top down. Like, man, if you're catching yeah. up on replay, like take a screenshot. Yeah. Not, no of, not of me and Damon, but yeah, no. Oh, Damon, maybe, maybe but not. Me. But all right. How about this? Whitney, leadership that doesn't believe the struggle is real. Val, I know Val, boy, raving fan of, of Allison's here. Marketing is everyone at the company, every customer interaction. Your culture, Gail says, right. And so, and then of course the no like trust, Greg Mishu is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Nelson, keep it rolling, please. Well, the, I think the underlying thing that I see missing in most manufacturing operations and in a lot of companies period is there's no unique value proposition. Mm -hmm. So when you come to their website or you're talking to a salesperson, yeah. what's the thing Right. What's that unfair advantage that you have that you're leading with that tells the potential customer what's in it for them? Why should they buy this and why should they buy this from you? What what is that unique thing? And I think it's my favorite thing in the whole world to help companies identify what that is. And it's usually right there under your nose and you can't see it because you're too close. Um, for one, uh, one client, I, we did, took them through the process and I said, based on our findings, you guys do one thing better than everyone else. And they said, what's that? I said, you make it easy. You make one part of the construction process easy from start to finish, mm -hmm. from tech support, purchase, how to use it, how it performs easy. And they just looked at me like, is that it? And I said, yep. Well, nobody else is talking about it in their vein, right? Nobody. Right. And the other, the other bigger guys, they don't make it easy. There's too many layers. It's, you know, you're, you're thrice removed from, you know, actually talking to a person, et cetera. So you've got to get a clear and unique value proposition. It's no longer about quality, customer service, and your, you know, hundreds of thousands of square feet of shop space. That's just entrance into the game. Number two, um, people are suffering from non-personality disorder. <laughs> they are, some people aren't even vanilla, right? It's like a sawdust sandwich on nasty stale white bread and it's it's they're doing themselves a disservice because they are so cool they're so unique <sighs> so you know it don't be afraid to identify what your personality is every brand has one so you know do you want to be the sawdust sandwich or do you want to be the you know juicy 64 ounce porterhouse dripping in butter and garlic and you leave people with a memory that they can't forget so non-personality disorder is killing us we've all been guilty of of suffering from it and i want to help manufacturers overcome it third is the wee wee syndrome okay so <laughs> exactly god, god bless Vale. <laughs> yeah yeah she she's uh she's an advocate and it's it's true though you know if you are busy staring at your own navel instead of staring at the person in, you know across from you you're doing yourself a disservice 
I still remember that picture you sent out. I don't know how long. I, know. I still laugh at it. Yeah, the little kid, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I, Damon, I thought we were going to do that on the show today. I thought we were going <laughs> to do I. Maybe next year, next January, when she comes back out. <laughs> yeah. So, just if anybody's wondering what we're talking about, so when when you come to I'm spoiler alert, when you come to the Purdue workshop, I don't know if you're going to have that slide or not, Allison, but she has this Probably. famous slide. It's like a nine year old boy, and like every nine year old guy knows exactly what we're talking about, and he's sitting there squeezing his belly button, looking at it, you know, like you know, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's hysterical. So, all right. So, <laughs> but that's what we do. And and seriously, if you look at any, pull up ten websites. Yeah. Ten websites from different manufacturers. <laughs> I can't let like this. Diane, tell them you're learning. It's important. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> if, if you do, we call it the five second speed test. So if you do a five second speed test, count how many times you see the word we. Right. And especially on your about us page, you got to flip the script. That's usually the second most popular page on a website. Um, it needs to focus on the viewer and the problem that you solve. And then you can give a little, you know, how you solve it. Yeah. And it's not a history lesson either. I want to point that out about it. You can have a history, but make it separate Dig way down here. Because what they care about is why you're doing this thing for me. Uh, and the more you can flip the script from we to you, mm -hmm. it changes everything. Just like the example I gave earlier, if you said in, and I see this all the time, on a website, we do this thing. Um, we use this kind of equipment. We've been doing this for this long we've won these awards we have these certifications work with us allison i've just i i believe we'll talk offline you need to do a ted talk about the wee wee <laughs> yeah oh god i was i was preparing I'm, that today. I'm like you know if i was to do a ted talk what was my topic and i hit the wee wee syndrome i'm like allison has got to do the wee wee syndrome on a ted talk you need to get that word out there so anyway please continue i'll consider it um, okay. Number four, consistency and creativity. So I see a lot of manufacturers who they say, we don't have the bandwidth. So we'll have our internal person, Carol, who also does accounting and whatever, we'll have her do some social posts when she has time. And I'm telling you right now, you are missing such a massive opportunity to be part of a community. Right. Social media, if you're doing it correctly in the B2B space, you're it's a two way conversation and it's ongoing and it's happening with or without you. So why not participate? Why not show up? Why not lead the conversation instead of, well, we'll just have Carol throw a little spaghetti on the wall and yeah, we'll see if something sticks. I guarantee you it won't. So it, it's a waste of time. And, and the lack of creativity. What, now, what, what were Carol's task again? She's she's the bookkeeper. He's yeah. the she, purchasing she's agent the, uh, and uh, HR and person she, and their social media marketer. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're yeah. killing us. All right. <laughs> so, but it, it's really, it's a disservice. And also, when people think that their high school um, nephew can come yeah. in and tweet out a couple posts because they're young so they must know about social media. they know about social media and again it you know th these things don't work so it's just they're not going to help you crush your goals if you keep doing what you've always done um and then number five you have no opt-in you have no lead generation happening and you're not nurturing people after the sale mm -hmm. so these are the things that i see really and they're easy fixes they're easy fixes like i'm in the process of redoing our website for example it's long overdue so guilty as charged but you know one thing that we put together and i got this idea from jay bear if you don't follow him he's amazing um is the 17 wit problems sorry 17 problems we help manufacturers solve just a just a download right. and by doing that you're giving somebody a window 
into, huh, I wonder if I have one of those problems. Right. Or maybe I'm unaware of, you know, so it's, it's to stimulate conversation. That's just a simple example. Cause a lot yeah. of times people get hung up on, I don't know what to do. Right. I don't know where to start. And I, my super friend gave me, this is perfect for today, right? Crushing your goals. Yeah. And I wanted to share with you one of the cards. This is from Napoleon Hill, right? Mm -hmm. Think and grow rich. Think and grow rich. Yeah. Right? Do not wait. The time will never be just right. Start where you stand and work with whatever tools you may have at your command. Yep. Do not wait. So, right. And that's, that's what I was going to say because look, Kurt and I, not that we were, I mean, we didn't wait. Hell, we still don't know how to do this. <laughs> and, and it, but I mean, people, I, I was in a client last week, no doubt, right? They, they, spent tens of thousands of dollars of thousands of dollars on a video for their company. And it's like, I, I was like, why, who was it for? Mm -hmm. It's for them. And I watched it and it was wee wee all over it. Yep. And I'm like, you know what you guys could have done? You could have spent, oh, 500 bucks and some video equipment, double few live streams, and you got 10 times the, the value out of that thing. Yep. Answering some questions, giving people some good information, helping them, you know, feel the way you want them to. But, oh, awesome, well, stuff. awesome stuff. Allison, I don't know if you ever get tired of this, but I, I have a famous <laughs> quote that I share every time that you're on stage. Do you know what quote I'm going to share? Do you, do you remember yes. Let's bring it. Do, do, do I, do, are you, are you okay if I share your, share this quote from this, this anonymous person? Sure. It's from a very famous book, according to my mom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going <laughs> to, dude. Oh my God. What a year it's going to be, Dave. I know. Dude, if this, like if this is any inkling of what 2023 is going to be. Okay, guys, Allison DeFord, Thought Marketing. Please connect with Allison yeah. on LinkedIn. Reach Let me out. just share. So I, I have a quote that I'm going to share with you guys, okay? Okay. Staying relevant and profitable today, capitals today, requires th three things. Now, we covered 10, right? Two buckets of five. Go back and please rewind. Listen to Allison over and over. Bring your Kleenex. Make sure you cover your keyboard so you don't spit whatever you're drinking on the keyboard, all right? Staying relevant and profitable today requires three things. Continuous self-disruption, reorganization, and strategic communications. Continuously innovating and keeping pace with how customers search, purchase, and share. To avoid falling into the abyss of mediocrity or, God forbid, extinction, manufacturers must do something they've always resisted in the past, that is from my dear friend, Allison DeFord. Allison, you shared that with me. We hadn't even met. We hadn't even spoken. You gave me that quote. I've dropped it in my little book. Dude, you are such a gift. You are a blessing. You're our sister. We love you. And oh my goodness gracious, you are so I good. Know. So much fun. So, I know everybody probably like, if they're winding down, I know we're coming to the, I, we're probably past the bottom of the hour. I, don't, I lost track of time. I'm just so absorbed in this. Okay. We covered your podcast, MFG Out Loud, with your buddy, your partner, your brother, Ray Zagano. Ray's going to be with us Ray. a couple weeks. You are the director, president, CEO of North American Forest Foundation. I want to make sure I give you a shout out there. You, uh, you're you speaking at the Purdue MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership on November 19th, Thursday at 12 o'clock. You guys don't want to miss this. Connect with Allison. Allison, my last question for you today. You ready? You sitting down? Okay. You talked about inspiration. I kind of went there earlier, but all right, 2023, you talked about your word for the year is fun. Who or what is your inspiration coming into this new year? Who or what is your inspiration as you crush and smash your goals for 2023? <clears throat> I would say definitely Mel Robbins. If you don't already follow her, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like she's... Uh, my future bestie and we uh, have a lot in common and I love that she shows up even when it's a shit show and she's just constantly dropping the gold mm -hmm. uh, based on just being authentic 
And so I've, she's been an incredible um, influence mm -hmm. on my life and my work. Um, and I would also say, you know, the manufacturers that I help, I, I just, I, I light up when we see their growth and their enthusiasm and their team gets excited and they feel proud mm -hmm. that that inspires me tremendously to do what I do every day. Um, and I love it so much. I would do it for free. I, I really do. Uh, and I believe in manufacturing. I believe in, you know, community and just all of us working together. And I'm also inspired by you guys, truly my, my LinkedIn band of brothers, my manufacturing mafia people, Darren and Vince at manufacturing masters. And it's just, it's exciting. It's really exciting. And, you know, there are days when I feel like, I don't know, I don't have anything to say. I don't think what I, <clears throat> what I'm saying is worth anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that imposter syndrome or whatnot. And uh, literally yesterday, didn't know what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> didn't. Yeah. There was a mental block and I thought, well, shit, this is just not going to go well. <laughs> it's going to be a huge bomb. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was, yeah, it was awful, yeah, right? I'm worried about that. Oh, yeah, go back. Yeah, it was so, man, it was like terrible. Look at, you know, epic, <laughs> Alice in your back. So, all right, guys, let's do this. Let's, uh, you know what? Been following Mel Robbins. But, okay, so, hey, guys, do us a favor. Man, if you've been sitting down or whatever you've been doing, just take a break, take a pause, and just like, why don't you stand out of your chair? Let's give a standing, roaring ovation for the one, the only Allison DeFord. Allison, dude, God, our, our love for you is just endless. Uh, I, I, I cannot express what, what you know, ugh, I'll get all choked up. So. Anyway, Damon, what do you got, dude? Man, was this like, what a, what a way to start off the year, man. Why, like, I don't know how, we, you know what, this yeah. might be our last episode for the year. because Yeah, we're, we're done. Gonna this one. <laughs> Just drop it. It's okay, everyone. We're canceling everything after this. <laughs> we're, we're done. All right. Yeah. All right. Awesome session. We're getting a round of applause. So, yeah, guys, so let's much. do this. 2023, man. Just hope you had an amazing holiday season. Just, you know, come out with just fire. Be someone's inspiration. Look at it. Like Allison that wasn't sure what she was going to talk about today and just absolutely yeah. destroyed today. So, Allison, awesome job. Guys, go out there. Keep crushing it. You're going to smash your goals in 23. Damon, let's close it out, brother. Take us away, man. I really don't know what we're going to say after that other than thank you, Allison. <laughs> it, I mean, I mean, after Allison, I mean, it's just hard. You just want to go, okay, everybody, let's just walk out the door. Right? You know, that's what you do. Okay, everybody, we're just going to walk out the door. But, hey, thanks, everyone, for being here. This first one we had, as we thought, was stellar. Go back. Show it. Man. Look at it again, Set you know, rock high. out Kurt and I, if you have to, that's probably a good idea, but then take, take, take heed what Allison's saying. As Kurt said, connect with their check out manufacturing masters, check out felt marketing. Yep. And, and you know, what's even funny. I'll do this. Cause I put on the shirt today and I got it on <laughs> too, <laughs> but it's, a, it's all good people. We're here. We're back again this year. Allison with wonder woman. I got my little army gentleman that you sent me so long ago. It stays with me every day. No good but show, baby. We're going to be back again next week with more great shows and more great guests. Thanks so much, everyone. We're out for this week. Seen, heard, Seen, heard, felt. felt.